Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and happy ho ho how in the hell am I still finding content to make about this game. Not ranking merchants that double as summons, so no Sela, no Bernal, no D. Not ranking important side quest NPCs, so no EG, no Gowry, no Bach. Not because I don't want to, but because my shit brick of a PC can't handle rendering a double feature release at the moment, so just for this video, I'm sticking exclusively to nomadic merchants. Isolated merchants, you know, those poor insignificant bastards that impact absolutely nothing if you kill them, aside from just making you feel bad. And if that sounds too specific, then don't worry, this video is going to be plenty long enough. And this lecture on internet safety I have prepared here is about to make it 60 seconds longer, because your inventory will always have space for some extra cybersecurity, right Kale? You into some weird shit? <laughs> well, I mean, no one else has to worry about it. NordVPN encrypts all of your internet activity and keeps all of your history and data completely hidden from ISPs. And if you sign up with my link, you can get two years of service with another four free months on top of that. Everyone already knows you can change a location to access an entire Studio Ghibli library on Netflix, you know, whatever, cool. But changing your virtual location has a use that's more important than that. There are several countries out there that limit and even ban access to websites like YouTube or services like Discord. You've also got access to really useful features like threat protection that catches dodgy hyperlinks, Discord scams, and all types of weird shit on the internet. And if you're traveling a lot, then this feature is a godsend on your phone because that encryption means you can stay safe from hackers on public networks that may want to drain your bank account. You can sign up for an exclusive deal using my link in the description for two whole years plus four free months of service. And there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you have any second thoughts, well, you have plenty of time to cancel. Anyway, yeah, we're starting with Kale, obviously. I guess I should be nice to him because he's the only merchant that actually has a name and that means he's important or something. Too bad, can't be fucked. The chain set is an armor-sized paperweight even for the most beginner tarnished, as is the shield and the torch, and arrows and bolts you should skip only because bows in this game are so useless that he might as well be selling you NFTs of Melina's thighs. Even if you like using consumables, the only items worth anything here are the cracked pots, and of course, the crafting kit, but I don't think you need me to point that out to you. The three cookbooks teach you how to make bone arrows, cured meats, holy water pots, and fucking medieval glow sticks that work a little too well in my opinion. I guess all things considered, this guy can be a pit stop for throwing daggers and cracked pots, but that's only until he runs out. Just grab the crafting kit and be on your way. Kali's getting a low C and that's only because I'm not in the mood for backlash if I rank him any lower. The Weeping Peninsula Merchant gets a letter grade bonus for selling this Vihander, and a letter grade penalty for selling me a note for 600 runes that has all the same value of looking something up on Wikipedia. Most of these items are just a wash, honestly. The Stone Sword Key is nice, but you'll be running into hundreds of those here in the next few hours. Same goes for the Smithing Stones. The Arturia Leaf can be used to craft Blood Boil and Uplifting Aromatics, which is neat enough, but the merchants haven't yet received the hint that bows and arrows in the game are status machines first, and nothing else second, because that's all they can find. Can do. But I guess I'll exercise a bit of lenience for that lantern because that is a pretty great item for splunking, and doubly so if you don't feel like carrying a torch in your hand the whole time and would rather two hand that Zweihander like a fucking man. I'll give this one a B, but seriously, I already have so many bolts and arrows, I'm putting them aside for arts and crafts projects at this point. As God is my witness, you better buy this man completely out of neutralizing bolluses. The only means to get an unlimited supply of these is by giving the medicine bell bearing to the twin maidens and that shits all the way in Altus, so otherwise hope you like hunting dragonflies. Poison is way too common an obstacle in the early game for the neutralizing bolluses to be this weirdly out of the way. So please listen to me, you need the shit out of those. And go ahead and pick up the cookbook while you're at it because that also contains the recipe for neutralizing bolluses. The stanching and stimulating bolluses are also available here, but they aren't nearly as necessary for expeditions in the early game. In fact, the stimulating bolluses are barely useful for anything at all since I can count the number of enemies that inflict sleep in this game on two fucking fingers. The broadsword is uh, fine. The round shield is also here. Oh look, more arrows and more Wikipedia articles. This might be the location of one of the worst notes in the game too, information wise at least. Specifically the stone digger troll note that tells you their heads bear old wounds. Uh, right, so aim for the head? Okay, sound advice, Thanos, thanks. Everything in this inventory is just okay, and the items that aren't are even less than that. Honestly, if you have the patience, you can easily hold out until you get to Korhin, and then just get the cure poison incantation from there. You know what, merchant? Take this deep. A sliver of meat, a lump of flesh, and a whole beast liver in your inventory, so feel free to drop the whole I'm going hungry business because that shit's bollocks. You're pretty much carrying a fucking charcuterie in your suitcase. The cookbooks here are worthless on a good day. All you can really get from these is a beast lure pot and exalted flesh. Arrows and bolts may pierce my throat, but a fireball is always better. St. Trina's arrow, however, I'm willing to make an exception for because this is still Limgrave and everyone is vulnerable to everything. Now you can put that rune bear guarding the ruins to sleep and go grab that axe 
Talisman. The Hand Axe is a size or two down from a normal axe, but it's definitely quick and has surprisingly good base damage despite it being all short and stubby like, and a nice pair of shields to round us off. One parries, the other has 100% physical damage negation. Either one is fine enough, so pick your favorite. I'd say a low B for this one because the cookbooks might be a bit dog shit, but the weapon and shields are pretty nice this early on, and inflicting any ailment on something in Limgrave is bound to give you good results. Yet another useless note for some mechanic that I already saw happening two hours ago, this time regarding the demi-human mobs. If you're coming from the coastal cave, you'll have already seen how mobs react to watching their leader get viscerally murdered by some kettlehead with a v-neck, so this note does nothing but establish what's already been confirmed. But he also sells the scale armor, so that more than makes up for it. The Crimson Amber Medallion is a powerful talisman that only gets better the later in the game you are, a cracked pot, and a bottomless supply of kukris. Honestly, come to think of it, that dipshit note is really the only thing in this inventory that isn't up to snuff. Good weapons, good tools, and one of the more fashionable outfits the game has to offer. Alright, fine then. Consider yourself noticed. I'll give this one an A because I feel like I'm being too mean to some of you. Or maybe I'm just trying to enact penance for all the merchants I've electrocuted over the past several months. Next up, we have the Saints Bridge Merchant. Possibly one of the greatest merchants we've run into, thus far at least. And even his inventory is everything you'd find in a dollar store lost and found bin. The Bandit Mask is great for some Elden Bling builds. The Short Sword and Halberd are, uh, weapons that you can certainly use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, didn't think this was going to turn into a educational video, did you? I can't talk too much shit about the flame chariot note because once I saw the little pilot sticking out the ass end of the chariots in Kaled, I didn't think there was much else to these things, I guess. So I just overlooked this mechanic just because I didn't think it was something I needed to know. And it still isn't, honestly, but doing it makes you look cool as shit, and that alone is reason enough. Also, he sells another cracked pot and a cookbook that teaches you how to craft poison arrows. It's far away from the best inventory I've ever seen, but at least a slightly better items are indicative that the game is in fact moving forward at this point. I'll give this one another B for now. Okay, I'm just gonna stop acknowledging arrows and bolts in these inventories from here on out, because it's just video padding at this point. You can tie a dandelion to some poor animal's femur and call it an arrow, and I think that tells me everything I need to know about the fucking QA department here. And why are you telling me not to ask where you got your wares? You have the astrologer set and the lantern. Okay, so you don't want anyone to know you made a trip to Goodwill? Someone put this loon on a watch list before he does something really crazy, like charge 3,000 runes for an oversized vegetable skewer. You got the kite shield here, which is aesthetically a more boring boring version of some shields you've already seen, but the guard stats are pretty nice, so I guess that makes up for it. The cookbook teaches you how to make crystal darts, which are useful for precisely one thing in the whole game, the spellproof dried liver, which is great for all the magic shitters you're gonna run into soon, and the shatter shard arrow, which is supposed to be a stealth utility, but it's much more fun to launch it into a guard's face and leg it out of there laughing your elven ass off. He has a lot of items that are kinda useful, which is more than what I can say for most of the other merchants I've seen so far. If I squint past the oversized toothpick and the eight hundred dollar walking stick. I can see myself giving this guy's stock a low B, but if I stare at it for long enough, I'll probably change my mind, so I'm just gonna move on. Next, let's have a look at the merchant near the Bell End Church. Really? This game's been out for 10 months and no one else has made that joke? I refuse to believe I'm first in line for this. The Rift Shield, firstly, is a decent parry shield with surprisingly good damage negation considering its size, but I guess the creative team got so busy deciding whether it should look more like a nipple or a puckered butthole they accidentally gave the same vendor two starting shields. The Blue Crest Shield is an equally okay shield with slightly higher everything just because it's a medium shield, but whenever I see the parry skill on a medium shield, I can almost hear the game laughing at me. Might as well put Spinning Weapon on a fucking crossbow. 4,000 runes is way too much for a rune arc, and the bewitching branch only works when it feels like it. The composite bow, if anything, gives short bow users somewhat of a damage option with Mighty Shot, and those cured meats really come in handy. I just can't imagine them tasting that good, because the item descriptions make it sound like someone marinated a ribeye in Pepto Bismol. This one's a C, I guess. I wasn't expecting to even see a merchant hold up near the ass end of the First Baptist Church, so I guess any surprise was a good one, all things considered. This particular vendor makes me chuckle a bit, only because he gives you like eight invasion items immediately before selling you a bunch of sleep tools and then acting like it wasn't intentional. It's like finding quarts of Ben and Jerry's and then seeing the cheesy romance movies on the very next shelf over. You also get the full blue cloth set here, which is one of the most stylish outfits in the game in my opinion. Those gauntlets go with goddamn anything. The meteor bolts look kinda cool when you fire them from a crossbow, but I'm sorry, craftable ingredients have no business being this fucking expensive. And doubly so considering he sells you a note about the damn dastardly frenzied flame village that you better not go near. You better buy this eye of yellow from 
me for 1500 runes instead of walking a few meters over to this highly suspicious yet conveniently located village where you can pick them off the bushes for free. And you should totally buy this note I wrote down on a used napkin for 800 runes that tells you how dangerous it is that you should stay away. Get mulched, you money-grubbing fuck. Who wrote these notes anyway? Do the merchants just figure all this out by themselves? Or is there some mysterious prankster out there writing down shit like Celibus is a huge cock on parchment and it just happens to be true? Either way, despite my bitching, I'm giving this one an A because the warrior set is still sexy as fuck, sleep is mega strong against some of the game's most notoriously stupid bosses, and there's also that one note that tells you revenants can be damaged by healing spells, and if you figured that one out by yourself, then that must have been one hilarious accident. You like shields? Well, welcome to, to, uh, to Shield Mart. Nope, can't be fucked, that one's staying in. I'd normally argue against merchants selling ingredients that you could otherwise find in a bush for 2,000 runes less than what you paid for it, but gravel stones I'm willing to give a pass because you can't reliably get to them until you're tickling the balls of the end game at Faramazula. That and the fact that for some reason he has half the game's available supply in his inventory, so I guess if you like crafting dragon wound grease that much, he knows you'll be back around sooner or later, the capitalist bastard. The cookbook here teaches you how to cook up lightning pots and lightning pots with a rope on them. You know what I pay a good couple thousand runes for some string. Why the fuck is it so hard to find string in this game? It, 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 it's string. Anyways, there's also the tree sir code, which I suppose is like every other soldier's sir code in the game, just a bit more fashionable. I actually do like the two notes here because it gives you knowledge about things to come later on in the game instead of sticking a merchant beside a walking mausoleum that sells a note telling you how to teach him the sit down command. I guess I'm feeling a low B. I don't know, I still don't like the fact that this dude has made it his pastime collecting gravel stones from god knows where, and is now selling them to me at an undoubtedly inflated price, knowing full well I'll probably come back for them anyways if I'm doing a consumable run. But uh, that tree surcoat does make my elven ass look pretty toned, and the shields aren't bad either. Next up is the Mount Gelmir Merchant. Well, looks like I'm gonna have to revisit my opinion on bolts and arrows finally, because it looks like I found the game's only consistent demolition expert. An infinite supply of explosive great bolts that I can buy to my heart's content means it'll be pretty hard to fuck this one up already, but let's see how the rest of this goes. The Confessor set is a nice bonus, because I do think it's a nice looking set that offers pretty decent protection. I don't like the boots section of the outfit looking like a pair of used paper bags after they've been stuffed with carnival popcorn, but switching to the bandit boots will fix that problem in a couple seconds. The cookbook here teaches you a nice volcano pot recipe, which makes my earlier comment about the whole demolition expert thing even more relevant. And it's all of these good items that push the guilty hood further out of place and into the toilet. Why is this, like, here. I'm just asking a question. This thing looks like someone trying to cosplay a fucking kitchen towel. Why does this exist? And why does it make me so angry that it's sitting here with all the good items? Oh, and the stone sword keys are reminding you that they exist as well. Not like you need any of them at this point because your pockets are probably overflowing with them. You know what? I'm gonna give this one an A because I feel like if I stick to this paragraph long enough, that guilty hood is just gonna make me change my mind. So take the A and let's just just leave. Get out of my face. There's a shack outside of Landell that I routinely forget exists. And it wasn't until I started the script for this video that called that back into question. Why do so many players, and by so many players I mean me, miss out on this particular vendor? Well, one quick look at his inventory will answer that question, don't worry. 10 gold and sunflowers for 300 runes apiece. Is this, is this a fucking joke? The Sentry's Torch is the only item that actually had me doing a double take, but why is this item here in a vendor? Can we think about this? I'm probably the only one weirded out by this, but one merchant already gave me a note about the Sentry's Torch being able to unstealth those black knife bastards, and now now I'm finding that exact item in the inventory of another merchant, reinforcing the theory that all the merchants in this game are just an underground cabal of pump and dump crypto scammers. What was this note anyways? A fucking letter of recommendation? 7,000 runes! Jesus, this really is a capitalist dystopia. I was surprised the torch didn't fucking blow up my character when I equipped it. But who needs magic torches when you have a sexy great shield and a fancy robe, which is, by the way, just the ruler's robe without its fancy winter coat. And I guess the consort's trousers do go pretty well with a lot of other outfits. I already wrote a segment on that though, so pop over to my fashion tier list for some of that. I'll probably put like a card or something up here too, where cards usually appear. Yeah, this one gets like a high C, I guess. Only three preserving boluses you can get from the merchant in Caled Highway North, but I really don't think this is at a point in the game where that even matters. Chances are you've already stumbled across Flame Cleanse Me, or at the very least if you're not doing a faith run, a few cured meats, or even the cookbook that tells you just how to make preserving boluses. That's the attitude I have with this whole inventory, to be honest. Just a whole bunch of why the hell is this here. Everything in this inventory there seems to be a more suitable option for. If you're looking for status, don't get the poison stones, get poison grease, or the poison armament incantation 
option instead. Don't get the weird limp fire sticks, get flame sling or fire pots or anything else that has fire in them. Don't get the Aeonian butterflies. I'm not even saying that to provide an alternative, just don't get them. You can get like 20 of them in the abandoned cave. 1500 runes apiece for these things are a fucking war crime. Anyways, moving on to the- Oh. Oh, okay, that's- that's- that's the whole inventory. Wow. If this was done to nail Kaled as the inhospitable no-man's land of the game, then god damn did it work. It's so bereft of civilization, even the merchants are resorting to picking sticks off dead trees and trying to sell them as magic wands or some shit. You'd have to be going mad to charge prices like these. And that's- well, kind of because they are, but we won't get into all that. Point is, this inventory has about as much value as a bag of sand. You can kill him or try to teach him a lesson all you want, but at the end of the day, the sharpest thorn in capitalism's side is always going to be the word no. The merchant here in the southern region of Kalis sells you the Great Helm, but don't get ahead of yourself and think we're in good shape yet just because of that. This is very obviously a false positive. Of course, by this time in the game, you've collected quite a bounty on you, which means stone sword keys are starting to just get stupid expensive. The champion set is also a thing that you can buy here. He sells a cracked pot as well, but hold it, you greedy bastard. This doesn't show up in the inventory if you started the game with the cracked pots keepsake. Why is this an issue now? This is just a weird happening that I'm not completely sure is even intentional. Like, why does this merchant in particular no longer sell you the pot? Why not the other 26 merchants with cracked pots out there in the world? Why don't they take those off the shelf? Why not the one that's fucking closest to you when you start the damn game? It's not even that important, but that's exactly why it's bugging the hell out of me. Is, is he cutting me off? Does he have a glance inside my knapsack filled with broken pottery and arturia leaves and just go, nah man, you got enough. What the fuck? Lastly, the note about gravity. It literally reads, You can bring flying foes low. <laughs> with gravity. You can't make this shit up. Why do I need a note for this? I think I would have already ran into this happening the first time I shot a gravity well at a cave bat, but even considering that, it's just insane to think I'm living in a world where, hey man, gravity exists is sound advice for something. Okay, yeah, I'm convinced at this point. Every merchant is just a scam artist. All right, Dragon Barrow. More gravel stones, 10 of them this time. At least it makes sense here because this is Dragon Barrow and there are, in fact, dragons assing about in the region, and it isn't exactly a stretch of the imagination that this guy just followed a dragon for a few weeks until its scales fell off like a woman following her dog around with a paper bag waiting for him to shit. There's also a ritual pot here, which is actually something I might need soon considering dragon bolt pots are only craftable with ritual pots, and they require, you guessed it, gravel stones! The land of reed samurai set is really nice looking, even if the greaves reek vaguely of that whole dad in sandals get up, and is even nice enough to give you a few sacrificial twigs, likely because you don't yet realize Dragon Barrow has endgame scaling, and might as well be marching sword out headfirst into a parking lot of sentient carnivorous wood chippers. The beast repellent torch is really nice for keeping basilisks off your nuts. The spiked kaistus comes with an 8 bleed buildup, meaning you can give it plenty of different affinities without losing that advantage, which also gives use to the two lost ashes of war, and there's a note that tells you about the hidden cave in Celia and a pair of dragon wound greases. Wow, this might actually be the first S-tier merchant on the video. I'm impressed. Great, now the rune arcs are 8,000 apiece. And the stone sword keys are five. All right, fucking wonderful. And although it sounds like I'm about to write a couple sentences bitching about it, that actually doesn't bother me that much when we're far enough in the game that stepping on an ant pretty much gives you all the runes you need for at least one. The cookbook teaches you how to cook rejuvenating boluses, and the only reason I can even think of that this is here is to prepare you for the surprisingly high population of worm faces in Faramazula. Otherwise, a cookbook that teaches me how to make one item, it, it, it makes me want to wipe my ass with it. The lightning great bolt can be kind of fun to use, but one thing I'm certainly not doing is hiking through the mountains for 10 minutes just because I'm out of great bow ammo, so this might actually be the one time I would sincerely recommend ending his ass just so you can get his bell bearing and buy everything you need at the Twin Maidens. On the contrary, you do get the Vagabond Knight set here, which is just a ruined knight set with a few extra details. Despite it being all disheveled and looking like a dragon just farted napalm all over it, it's still a nice enough looking set. Oh, and there's 10 Thawfrost boluses, which is just about as many as I'll need to explore or approximately one room in Castle Soul. That's what should have been in the fucking cookbook, you mongrel! Now it's time to go underground and find the last three merchants. You like soap? You dirty brat, I can smell you through the fucking screen. Go take a shower. Well, this guy has plenty of it, and he also sells you the recipe for it, along with the oil pots and teaching you how to make fried chicken, or whatever meat that is that I'm eating with these. There's a larval tier here if you're regretting life choices and you would like your character to have bigger biceps instead of being a religious fanatic. The dwelling arrows are those 50 cal bullets the ancestral marine snipers shoot you with across the river, but the fact that they don't have the same speed or power just makes 
makes them feel less preferable. Not that I didn't know that's what I was gonna get. I mean, think about it. If the dwelling arrows were actually that strong and could be fired from a regular bow, they'd be so good that no other option would even exist. The exceedingly rare nascent butterflies are there for you to cook food. That's the only thing they're even there for. And 1500 apiece for these things would almost feel like a shakedown if it weren't that these meats were surprisingly really good at doing what they do. The show tell is really nice, but otherwise this inventory feels kind of starved, even considering you can get to it early game. You only sell the stone sword keys for 2,000 runes though, so I can't be too mean. Here's how you shop with the merchant at Ainsel River. Buy out the gravity stone fans and chunks, all of them, and then fucking leave. Don't talk to him, don't kill him, just, just, just leave. If you didn't like the prisoner outfit the first time you saw the little kettle pot on your head, then you aren't gonna like it when it's being sold to you for more of a price than it's worth. The perfumer's cookbook only teaches you the acid spray mist recipe, which is far from the most useful perfume concoction in the game, and the other cookbook gives you the recipe for thaw frost and stimulating boluses. One there are already plenty of in the world, and the other you'll never fucking use in your life. Additionally, I think Celestial Dew might be in my personal running for most points pointless item in the game. All it does is stop anyone who's angry at you from being so angry all the time. Sure, it's not like most of the important NPCs are located in no attack zones where the game happily flicks a switch and turns off all your weapons for a few minutes or anything, but if you've actually managed to kill any of the less important NPCs out there, like Bok, then good luck bringing them back, fuckhead. Right, so it's not a sin to literally kill someone, but it's a sin to make them angry at you. <laughs> Fuck's sake, I wish other religions were this honest. Last, but not really least, certainly not most, and I guess in general just quite unceremoniously, the imprisoned merchant near Mogwin Palace. And motherfucker does he sell absolutely nothing, oh my god. A few bird bolts that cause blood buildup, wow, so special, so useful. Three stanching boluses that are very useful considering the area you're in, but you probably happened upon the cookbook that gives you the recipe back in Stormvale. You have ten festering fingers, but for the sake of this video, those fingers would go to better use if you shove them between your ass cheeks and then went to the costume party dressed as Hamburger Helper. He does sell an infinite supply of blood roses, so I guess if you've exhausted every other option and picked clean absolutely every other cranny in the game to where you've acquired every single blood rose possible and somehow used them all, then yes, I suppose an infinite supply of blood roses is kind of useful. I try and kill him, but apparently this one kicks your ass. He has a shit ton of HP and he uses frenzy flame incantations and shit. If you do kill him, you also get his bell bearing, but any reason you'd fucking want it is beyond me, so. Is it technically an outro if I set time aside specifically at the end of the video just to tell you that I don't have an outro? Is, is that, is that a thing? Can I, can I like do that? You know, whatever, who cares? This video is done. I'm gonna go play some Hades.